Hallelujah, God, you Good morning, church. And it's a blessing to be in the house of God this morning. It's an honor to be here. Amen. We are blessed to be alive. We are happy to be here in the house of God to give him praise and to give him honor. Amen. Let us all stand. I just want us to just open our hearts to God this morning and give him some praise. Give him glory and honor to his name. Come on, just worship God this morning. Come on, worship him, worship him. Lift your hands, everybody lift your hands and worship God. Everybody lift your hands and worship God. Once you have a hand, lift it up. Lift your hands and worship God. Lift both hands Lift your two hands and worship God. Lift your two hands. Open your mouth. Let God know that he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. God, he is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Sister Julie, come and just open us in prayer this morning. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Lord, you are great. This man like you. And because of you, God, that's why we're here this morning. Lord, we thank you because when we sleep last night, you works all over us. Lord, all that we needed, God, you are greatly provided to, to us. And this morning, God, as we come before you, help us, Lord, to praise you and to lift you up and to honor your name because you alone are worthy. Lord, what you have done for us in the past hours, God, no one is going to do it but you. And now, Lord, we say, praise you. And we worship a holy name. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for what is to be said and to be done. Lord, let it be done in your name and to your own glory. I and mean, to be your honor, God. Lord, as we come this man, Lord, help us to live, live this place better than how we live, God. In Jesus' name, praise amen. the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. We turn to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And we read from 1 to 8. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 3, reading 1 to 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, reading 1 to 8, and it's on the screen, so if you don't have your Bible, you can read along with us on the screen. Bianco, Bianco, I want you to stand please. I don't want everybody to read. Okay, everybody. And it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stone, and time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to be silenced, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Amen. And this morning, I just want to encourage you or to remind you that there is a time for everything. Amen. Now, the reason why we're here this morning, because it's a time to worship. Amen. It's a time for us to refrain from everything else and put God first. Amen? And so therefore, I want to see everybody this morning worshiping God because he said it is time to worship him. Amen? Amen. And so we are obedience people, of course, and so we are going to do what the Bible tells us. Amen? So this is his time, and we are going to give him his time. Amen? And so we're going to start, we're going to sing this song, Be Magnify, O Lord. Hallelujah. Be magnified, O oh Lord, you are highly exalted, and there is nothing you can do, O oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified, O oh Lord, be magnified, be magnified, O oh Lord, you are highly exalted, and there is nothing you can do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Be magnified. Oh Lord, you are highly exalted. Oh, 
just tell it be magnified. Be magnified. Oh Lord, you are highly. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing. And there is nothing you can do. Exalted 
tears And there is nothing you can do Oh Lord, my eyes are on you Be magnified Oh Lord, be magnified Oh Lord, be magnified. Hallelujah, be magnified. Oh Lord, you are highly, you are highly exalted, and there is nothing. Magnified, oh Lord, be magnified. Come on and tell it, be magnified, be magnified, oh Lord. You are highly exalted, and there is nothing, and there is nothing you can do. Oh Lord, be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified, be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified. Hallelujah. Be magnified, O oh Lord. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you, oh Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you oh Lord, oh Lord oh Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary Tried and true with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. 
your sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, yeah, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, oh, for you, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, yeah, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you, God bless you, oh Lord, oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy.
sanctuary for you. Oh, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'll be a living sanctuary. Hallelujah. And that's all our motto is this morning, is to be a living sanctuary for our God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to continue. We're going to sing this song, Crucified. Hallelujah. Above all powers, above all king, you know, God is still God and he still reigns upon the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us all stand and worship God this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Above all powers, above all king, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all powers, above all children, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Crucified. Crucified, you lay behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall, thought of me, above all. Thought of me above all, oh, crucified. You lay behind the storm, you live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. Of all nature 
and all created things above all wisdom and all the ways of man you were here before the world began above all Like a rose, trampled on the ground, he took the fall, thought of me, but above all things, he still did it, amen. Can you imagine looking at a pretty rose, a nice blooming rose, and take it and trample it under your feet? You know what it looks like. But all of that, in all the beauty of God, he still sent his son and die for us all because of us. Amen. And that's the kind of God we serve, a God that cares about us. This morning I want to ask you a question. Do you care about our God when he has done so much for us? Hallelujah. 
let us all care about our God this morning. And so we're going to bring our tithes and offering before God this morning. We're going to sing this song, I want this kind of blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Let us all stand. When Jacob met the Lord upon a lonely night and wrestled there alone until the morning light, he won the prize title and good it for the right. I want that kind of blessing. Oh, I want, I want that kind of blessing that save and keep and satisfy my soul. I want, I want that full salvation till below of heaven no be rule. When Israel at last came into Canaan's land, the Lord is which is gave so full on every hand. They drove their four before them and dwell a happy band. I want that kind of blessing. Oh, I want. I want that kind of blessing that save and keep and satisfy my soul. I want, I want that full salvation till below of heaven no be ruled. This is the day of grace, the comfort there is here. We are a chosen race, our God is joy in there. He's waiting to be gracious. The prayer of faith to him, and then he'll send the blessing. Oh, I want, I want that kind of blessing that save and keep and satisfy my soul. I want, I want that full salvation till below of heaven no be ruled. This is the day, this is the day of grace. The comforter is here. We are a chosen race, our God is joined there. He's waiting to be gracious, the prayer of faith to hear, and then he'll send the blessing. Oh, I want, I want that kind of blessing that save and keep and satisfy my soul. I want, I want that full salvation till below of heaven no be rule. When Jacob, when Jacob met the Lord upon the lonely night and wrestled there alone until the morning light, he won the priceless title and girded for the right. I want that kind of blessing. Oh, I want, I want that kind of blessing that save and keep and satisfy my soul. I want, I want that full salvation till below of heaven no oh, below. When Jacob, when Jacob met the Lord upon the lonely night and wrestled there alone until the morning light, he won the priceless title and good and for the right. I want that kind of blessing. Oh, yes, I want, I want that kind of blessing that save and keep and satisfy my soul. I want, I want that full salvation to be lost of heaven no be Oh, I want, I want that kind of blessing that save and keep and satisfy my soul. I want, I want that full salvation till below of heaven no oh, be ruled. Oh yes, I want, I want that kind of blessing that save and keep and satisfy my soul. I want, I want that full salvation till below of heaven no oh, be ruled. Oh yes, I want, I want, I want the blessing that save and keep and satisfy my soul. I want, I want that full salvation till be 
pillows of heaven, oh, be ruled. I want, I want, I want that kind of blessing that save and keep and satisfy my soul. I want, I want that for salvation till pillows of heaven, oh, be ruled. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I want that kind of blessing. Bless the Lord. We're going to ask Brother David to bless the offering this morning. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear righteous Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here safely. We pray that the offering will go to good use. We pray that you brought us out of our house, dear Father God, to come into your place. Dear Father God, we just want to give you our glory and praise for you as the protector, you as the provider. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Just before we get the message, I'm going to keep saying it all the time. When the message is being preached, please sit attentively. Try not to let the enemy distract you. The idea of going to the bathroom, back in, bathroom, back in, back in, it does get very disturbing and distraction. So avoid moving and listen to what God has in store for us this morning. The very word that comes forth this morning may be just for you. Amen? And so we want to make sure we get everything that God has in store for us. Amen? And so I'm asking you all to listen attentively and be as quiet as possible so that we can get the voice of God. Amen? We're going to sing, He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. Miracle working God, He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder, He's a miracle, He's a miracle working God. Oh, He's a miracle working God, He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. My God is our wonder. Hey, he's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is our wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. 
my God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. Miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, things are looking better. Things are looking better. For the Lord, He's on my side. Things are getting better. Plenty better for me. Things already better. Oh, things are getting better. Things are already better. For the Lord, He's on my side. Things are already better. Plenty better for me. Things already better. Oh, things are already better. Things are already better. For the Lord, He's on my side. Things are already better. Plenty better for me. Things are already better. Oh, things are already better. Things are already better. For the Lord, He's on my side. Things are already better. Plenty better for me. Things are already better. Hey, things are already better. Things are already better. For the Lord, He's on my side. Things are already better. Plenty better for me. Things are already better. Hey, things are already better. Things are already better. For the Lord, He's on my side. Things are already better. Plenty better for me. Things are already better. Hey, things are already better. For me, any better. Hi, these are any better for the Lord. He's on my side. Things are any better for the Lord. He's on my side. Things are any better. Plenty better for me. 
things out of it. Things are already better. Oh yes, yes, things are already better. Things are getting better. For the Lord, He's on my side. Things are getting better. Plenty better for me. Things are getting better. For the Lord, He's on my side. Things are getting better. Plenty better for me. Things are getting better. For the Lord is on my side, things are already better, plenty better for me, things are getting better. For the Lord is on my side, things are getting better, plenty better for me, things are already better. Hallelujah. For the Lord. Is on my side, things are really better, really better for me. Things are really better. Is that so for all of us here this morning? Let me just sing it loud and clear. For the Lord is on my side. Things are really better, really better for me. Things are really better. Hallelujah. You want to try it one more time? <laughs> for the Lord is on my side. Things are really better, really better. For me, things are really better. Hallelujah. Let's all take God because we're living with a better God. Things are really better. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Things are really, really better. Things are really, really, really better. Hallelujah. <coughs> Thank you, Brother Dave. I, you better stop telling lies because you will know better. Amen. <laughs> but we didn't say things that are just really better, you know. We say, for the Lord is on my side. Things are really better, really better for me. Things are really better. Better. The Lord is on my side. I don't care how things look. Amen. When God is on your side, things must come better. Hallelujah. <laughs> things must come better because the Lord is on my side. Wow. You know, 
Some people like to play around with the God I serve. And some people said I get passionate. And when I speak about my God.
and ask God for something and get it. And you who say a long time praying and nothing happening, because that young saint of God believes that God is able to do what he says he's going to do. And they pray believing that they shall receive it. He said, and you shall have it. He said, what? You shall have it. Amen. I want the church, let me tell you something. People believe in God. Out of a situation, he wants to do it, and he's going to do it for you today. Text this morning. Bigger than the problem. Amen. I wish I can have a congregation that give God something hard to do every day. Something that is impossible with man. Ah, oh, somebody say, what? You crazy or what? No, my God ain't crazy. My God is looking for somebody to give him hard things. You know, you, you, you're coming to God and you're kind of afraid because you come before God, God says, only that? <laughs> only that? <laughs> we come to God and say, Lord, I need a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars, man. You can have one ask but a day for that, man. You don't come to me for a thousand dollars. You come to put a day for a thousand dollars. Amen. So come with something better than that. God, you know, sometimes God don't study us because we're asking God myths. You ask some myths. You're, asking, you're wasting the time. Remember there was a time in Royal Bank in St. Kitts, you should charge you $30 a week a month to hold your money. And everybody make noise. You know what happened? Royal Bank said, you are coming to the bank to waste my time. You, I need to see some people come inside here Acting for 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 100 million, not no stupid $10,000. So go back that across the street. The guy who said, give me a dollar, make $1,000 in a day. So you're not going to come to me for that. Go back that now. God is a big God, you know. He's a big God. And you know what I'm, I like about God? When I preach, I will be preaching to me. So for all of you who don't like what I say, all of you don't like what I say. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to me. <laughs> Amen. I was talking to me. Because I don't know anything about you. <laughs> I don't know your business, but I know my business. And I know I want my faith to rise. And I need to speak to myself. <laughs> I have to talk like David so. <laughs> Why are thou disquieted within you? So, you're acting like your God is a small God. David said, So, what are you worrying about? You got nothing to worry about. Because, So, your God is a big God. Your God is a powerful God. So, you got nothing to worry about. Because all you've got to do is to call upon me and I'll be unto you. Said my God, just call. Don't get afraid. God said, come boldly. Come boldly before his throne. Don't come. Too many people come to God bawling. Not me wrong in bawling, but you're bawling in the right type of bawling. Your bawling should be a bawling of purpose. I, my tears are not tears of sorrow. My tears are tears of joy. My tears are tears knowing that I got somebody I can call upon at any time. 
My tears are because I know that he's not going to let me down. My tears is because I know that that which I ask God for, he's going to do it. Don't come to God like you're begging. Oh, Lord, I don't deserve anything from you. Oh, Lord. Even some crumbs on the table. <laughs> So what is what is wrong with my child? What is wrong with my child? You can get what you need from God if you only ask and stop believing that God is some joker and God is just some name in a book somewhere and a God don't have no strength and no purpose. Let me tell you something. The, God I, the real reason why I'm serving God is because he has proven to me that he's really God. I do not have time to waste. If I had a, if I had a, a clue that God was wasting my time, I would not have been here this morning. Don't waste your time. Get involved with God and throw all, cast all your cares. He said, cast all your cares upon me. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to talk about you must be born again. Why am I talking about giving and you have to be born again? That's the most important thing, isn't it? You must be born again. That's the first thing. You first must accept Jesus Christ as your personal friend and indwelling Savior. And it is not optional. Amen? Now, there are some people say, you don't have to be born again. You can be a nice person. Somebody said, you don't have to kill anybody. You don't steal anything. You don't get in no trouble. You're a nice boy. You're a nice girl. Everybody love you. You don't have to bother with this born again thing. But Jesus said, Jesus said to a man who was a ruler of the Jews. He was talking to a big shot. Amen. You know, we just like to tell the guys in the alleys and now I'm sitting on the wall and road and who drinking the rum and who guys are uh, around town like they don't have nothing to do. We tell them that. But when it comes to the, the ruler of the Jews, it takes guts to tell the prime minister he must be born again. It takes guts to tell the governor general he must be born again. It takes guts to tell the Queen of England she must be born again. A lot of people believe because they are privileged here on earth that the special arrangements are going to be made for them in order for them to go to heaven. But Jesus said, you must be born again. There's no special treatment. There is no special treatment. Amen. Hallelujah. That's where it comes to. We're all equal. The same thing the beggar have to do to go to heaven. The same thing the rich man has to do to go to heaven. The same thing the thief has to do to go to heaven is the same thing the queen has to do to go to heaven. The protocol doesn't change. Same thing 
all the time. He must be born again. <laughs> In Acts chapter 3, he gives a story very well. He said there was a man of the Pharisees and they say his name was Nicodemus and he was also a ruler of the Jews. He was not a small boy. They could have just said there was a man of the Pharisees came to Jesus by night but I wanted to let you know who that man was. He wasn't a piece of boy on the street. He was Mr. A Pharisee. He had a name, Nicodemus. And I believe Nicodemus was a big name in those times. But he was a ruler of the Jews. If he says something must happen there, it better happen. If he says you go there, you better go. If he says this is the way, you better walk this way because he has the last say. He is a ruler of the Jews. But he came to Jesus by night and said unto him, the Rabbi, the rule of the Jews is saying, Master, the rule of the Jews recognize that there's somebody bigger than him. The rule of the news understand that there is someone that is, may not be a rule of the Jews, but is above him. And he says, we know you know, when the rulers know what's going on, it's good to know that the rulers know because a lot of times they don't, they play like they don't know. But this ruler said, we know, and me alone, you know, a lot, all of us, all the rulers, all the big gang of us in here who play in big shot. We know that thou art a teacher and you came from God. <laughs> we know that. Don't wonder we hear people talking in the street. They know differently. Amen. You know they got people around saying all kind of things. But they know differently. They, you know they got people say all kind of negative things about the church. But they know differently. They know differently. <laughs> they know who you are. They know you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. Amen. Whenever they pass close to you, they get goosebumps and they get scared. And that is why when they see you coming on one side of the road, they make sure they go on the other side. They can't stand you because there's an anointing in you that nobody has to tell them. They go, no! Say, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Wow. And Jesus could have told him, you are a smart guy. You are really a ruler. You know what you're saying. You, you, you deserve your position. You really know what's going on. But Jesus said, hey, hold a minute there, brother. You got to learn something. Verily, verily, I say unto you, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said, Mr. Big Shot, <laughs> Mr. Nicodemus, hallelujah, Mr. Ruler of the Jews, you may be a big shot. You may have power and authority, but you need to fix yourself up because you ain't ready to go with Jesus. You're not ready for heaven. You got to fix yourself up. 
Yes, I'm a rule of the Jews. Yes, I am, I am a man who knows the Bible. Yes, I can read the Bible from back to forth. I know the Ten Commandments. But something is wrong. You must be born again. You know, we as Christians got to be very careful what we're doing. Mr. Big Shot and Mr. Millionaire from downtown, they come up here and they'll say, hey, Pastor Hazel, I, I, you, um, I've been checking, looking at you all the time in your ministry, and it is, I, I, I really like what you're doing, and I, I have brought a very good offering here to help you with the work, and I can just say thank you. And I go and feel so good. I say, thank you. And we ain't going to tell him nothing at all about his soul salvation. Could you imagine? Pastor Lincoln Hazel tapped me a few thousand dollars and he said, I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for you. Please make some more money to do for me. <laughs> And Pastor says they left with the thousand dollars gone straight to the bank and he said, Wow. Whew. But Pastor Hazel did not say, Hey, thank you, but accept. This money ain't gonna help you go to heaven. This money you're giving me would not give you a special position in God's throne. But this money means nothing except you be born again. How many times we drop the ball? We drop the ball because we like praises and we like good treatment and we like special position. We like to know we can sit here and we can sit there and we can wear our collar and people call you pastor and people call you reverend and people call you apostle and people call you this and you dress always dress up and you feel like you're great and you're a big and you're a big shot in the community and nobody say you must. The ball. He can. He must be born again. The millionaires are getting away without giving the word of God. The millionaires are just living and dying and going to hell. But they're giving the church his money. Giving them money for the anniversary. Giving them money for building their church. They're giving, they're supporting all kinds of things in the church. And we never tell them, thank you. But you must be born again. You know, that's why you see the church is so weak. Because we like to beg. Amen. We like to beg everybody. Beg, 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 beg. All kind of care to full out, put in this, put in that. Going round and round begging money. What the Bible say about that? The Bible really says something, you know. That when we begin to do the right thing, we're going to learn that we're going to be borrowing. You know that? If ye keep my commandments, if you do the things that I tell you to do, my statues and so forth, it shall be the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. These guys are supposed to be coming to you. Not we're going to them. Jesus didn't go to Nicodemus. Jesus and go to Nicodemus. Nicodemus find Jesus. When he had a search light, a gutu lamp, he find him in the night. Those days they had no flashlight and no street lights and no electricity. The candles and gutu lamp. 
For those young people don't know what they call gutu, gutu lamb. It's a can with oil and a wick in it. <laughs> Amen. And whatever he did to find Jesus in the night, he did find him in the night. Amen. Amen. It's time to get some, some rich men finding us in the night. It's the time we get some government officials coming to look for us in the night. It is time we get some big shots coming to, to get a word from God in the night. I don't care when they come. But we must stand up for what is right and we must not be bought by their little offering because God is bigger than that. You know, everything we want, the church is a church. The church of the living God is an institution of begging. That's not what God wanted us to be. Do you know that? Do you know that? Do you think God, God saved us to be a beggar? Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Everything we do, we beg. Everything. You want some instruments? Beg. You, you want a bus? We beg. You want a church? We beg. Everything we begging, begging, begging. How come we are not beg? Amen. Why? Is that the reason? Why you don't come on begging? The church does not even know where they stand. Everywhere. Sometimes you get into trouble because 10 different people begging you at the same time. I mean, 10 different churches come, come to your business and they're begging. One begging for you, which one begging with a smile. You must understand that we must tell the world that except they be born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. And, and, and when Jesus speak, Jesus don't give us any avenues to if our but. It's whap except a man be born again. And Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? <laughs> Could you imagine? A ruler ain't have a clue. A teacher doesn't have a clue. A leader doesn't have a clue. He doesn't even know what to do. He said, must he enter into his mother's womb the second time? Into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus, oh my God. I thought I was talking to a bright guy. I thought I was talking to somebody with a little common sense. I thought I was talking to somebody. How in the world could you, a big old man who is mother than dead, think that you could go back in your mother's womb and be born again? So there are some people who you think bright ain't so bright at all. Jesus answered, very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. As much as you're a ruler of Jews, God favorite, God loving people, you can't get there unless you be born again. Got to be born of the water. The born of water is natural birth. Amen. The born of water is not baptism. The born of water is the water you call 
natural birth. You know, when your baby going to be born, they have the water bag and water, water. It's a whole water exercise. And that's the born of water. And of the spirit, of the spirit, you got to be born of the spirit. Then he said, marvel not, don't worry. Marvel not that I say unto you. You must. He said, and that, is, that is easy. They just make it even worse. He said, let the argument stop. <laughs> let the argument stop here. You can't go to heaven without S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. You must be born again. You must be born again. Today we should have been having baptism. Remember I told you it was going to happen today? And you all think and forget, right? Don't forget. A lot of people are going to come to this church and go straight to hell. You know why? You get the word of God every Sunday and I don't hide to tell you the truth. The thing about God, God doesn't have two ways. That's the, the, the problem God has. God doesn't have two ways. God has one way. And even when he tell you he provides you two ways, he says, I provide you light, I provide you darkness, choose light. I, I provide you life, I, I show you death, choose life. He, he don't, he's trying to tell you, I give you the answer. Don't even choose those ways. Those ways are not God's ways. Those ways are going to get you in the way. There are a lot of people think by giving good offerings and by giving donations and by looking after the young people and by taking care of the orphans, by taking care of the old people, that you're going to go to heaven. No! Except a man be born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. Wow. Can't enter the kingdom of God. You know, as I speak to people about baptism all the time, they, they come to church and they refuse to give their life over to God 100% in the baptism. Even though the word of God say, he that believe in his baptism shall be saved, accept the Lord say, uh, go ahead, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, teach them to observe all things that the Lord has commanded you in Matthew chapter 20 and 90. What is happening here is that the people hear the word of God and they wish that God could make a change specially for them. And somebody going to ask me, so what are you saying? My mother went Methodist and Anglican and there was nice people and they died. Are you telling me they're going to hell? I said, me, you don't send people to hell nor heaven. What you and I have to do is not get into God business, get into your own business and do what God say you must do. Amen. God is not going to judge you for what you don't know. God is going to judge you for what you know. Amen. Well, I believe baptism don't save people, so I don't want you to go on and tell people, well, I'm saying you're going to be baptized to get saved. But I believe that saved people are obedient children of God. I believe that. I believe that when to show that you are saved, he says, you are my, um, if you do the thing that I say, you are my disciples when you do the thing that I say. You are my, you are my people. You are, you, I know you love me. You love me when you do the things that I say. He's like a wife that loves her husband and doesn't do nothing he say. Everything he say, she just do opposite. If you love somebody, you please them. And I think that I'm not on a preacher, a gospel, 
that says that you could go to heaven without, bapti without the, the baptism and water. Because I know if you, if you could be baptized in water and go straight to hell. But what I am here to tell you is that you must obey God. And everything that is in the Bible is for you and for me. And let me tell you this. You better obey God. Yes. There are some people, it's not only just baptism. There's something that God just tells you to do it. The mother of Jesus was very quick in explaining to the servants when she told her, her son that he had no wine. She said, look, my son's going to be talking to you. I don't know what he's going to tell you. But the things that he says to you are not up for discussion. The things that he says to you, you got to do it. Do it. Do it. Now let's explain. If the, if the servants did not obey Jesus and put the water in the water pots, what would have happened? Would we have heard the story about the first miracle that Jesus did was to turn water into wine? Do you think we would have got that first miracle? That wouldn't have been in the Bible. It might be something else in the Bible that those people dropped down dead because they refused to hear what Jesus said. You don't know what happened. I don't know what would have been the, the, the repercussions of not accepting Jesus' words. Could you imagine? I am glad that I don't know what would have happened. When you obey God, you're going to prosper. Don't say, well, suppose I ain't obeying. What happened to me? Can you imagine God say, if I have to obey, I must do the one. What is going to happen to me if I don't obey God's word? Well, I know in, I know, I'm not obeying that one. Not me. Hallelujah. I'm not obeying that one. I don't, I don't do enough. And if God is telling me that, then I'm busy. I'm not doing that one. I'm coming to church on Sundays. I'm going to give me offering. I'm going to give my tithes. But I will never baptize. I'm not going to be obedient to God's word. But there's a man who did something similar. His name was Peter. And he was a nice man. But when God told him, Peter, I want to wash your feet. They said, who feet? Mine, not my feet. They said, what? Not my feet, God. Not my feet. Not my feet. Jesus watched him in the face and said, Peter, you make a mistake. If I ain't washed those feet, this is the end of me and you. I have no more business with you. From today, you're no longer a disciple. From today, from today, you're on your own. What's wrong with Jesus? What's what, what really wrong with Jesus? A little water upon your foot? I can wash my foot. No, I just wash no foot for me. What are you talking about? I just tell him I ain't gonna wash him. I mean, all the things I do for Jesus, I with him all the time. Everything, everything I deal with him, I deal with him all the time. I'm doing everything he say. But just because I tell him don't wash my foot, he say, he's done. Peter said, what kind of Jesus is this? Just a little water on my foot. My foot, no want to wash in. And I could wash my own foot. And I don't want Jesus to wash my foot. That should be a plus, isn't it? You say, hey, unless I wash those feet, I have nothing to do with you. I'm not sure if you're getting the message, you know. When Jesus says something, he doesn't go around the bush. He can make the cross for you.
and your clothes filled. Except you be born again. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. No clothes. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. And he that is born of the flesh is flesh. Except to be born again. No space in heaven for you. Say this to say. You need to humble yourself. You know, somebody goes to the beach and they'll dip and they'll dive and they'll go and they'll splash and they'll splash up water one minute and they'll have a wonderful time. But Jesus said, go and get baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Not me. Not me, not me. Not me, not me. Like I read an article of a doctor was talking to a patient and tell him uh, after checking himself I find something is wrong with your heart. And I may have to push in a, a pacemaker in there, so. And the doctors, they tell the doctor, okay, when, 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 when should I do that? Just tell me when. And they have to take, do a, a test that to push up in your anus into your belly and take, you want to see how your intestines are looking. And, um, He said, okay, are you ready? He say, and uh, you have to vaccinate against COVID. He said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. <laughs> He'll take a heart surgery. <laughs> he, will, he will do anything else in his life. But take a vaccination. Oh, no, no, what is going to do? Not taking that vaccination. Remind me of some people. Just to be baptized. They're bawling to be baptized. But something got to be good about it. Why Satan is telling you, don't do that. Please don't do that. Just for me. Just for me. Go to church. Pay your tithe. Pay your offering. Sing. Praise the Lord. Oh, give all you. Come to the prayer meeting, come to Bible study, witness. You can do everything, but don't baptize here, please. Devil said, please don't baptize for me, please. If it's one thing you could do for me. Why would Satan so much don't want us to be baptized? Eh? You know why? Because every time you get baptized, you are enacting the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mean, you're not doing anything to nobody but, but the devil. <laughs> Amen. You're showing the devil an inaction. This is, how, this is how you get saved. You get saved because Jesus, you didn't get saved because Jesus died. You get saved because Jesus resurrected. You know that? You know, if Jesus didn't resurrect, you would, have, you, would have, you would have never been saved. But because Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and was buried in a tomb, and while he was in the tomb, and the devil think he was dead, he sees somebody rapping in his door and saying, may I have my keys? <laughs> he said, devil, I ain't really dead, you know, I came for my keys. And Jesus took the keys of hell and the grave and death. 
from the damn hands of the devil. And that is why your son and your daughter who is not saved is still alive because as you pray and you pray and you pray, God is keeping them alive so that they can give their life to Jesus Christ. If the devil had those keys still, you will kill us quick because he wants us to go to hell. He don't want us to live and go to heaven. You want to know why many people are alive? Because you are praying. You come to morning and evening prayer meeting and you're praying for all kinds of people, all over people. Don't even know you're praying for them. They don't even know you're praying for them. But God is preserving them so they can get saved. Amen. That's what the death of Jesus Christ is about. So when you get baptized, this is what happened. Satan can't stand it. That happened so much thousand years ago. And Satan still can't stand it. Every time you've been baptized. And you go under the water. And then you come back up out of the water. Satan says, no, I don't like to see that. <laughs> you, 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 you reminded me of a thing that I never forget. You remind me of something that really mess up the whole hell. Hell has no power. Hell don't have no authority. Devil lost everything when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. So can you? The many Methodists and Anglicans are demanding to be baptized. They read the word of God. And they say, I read the word of God. He said, that believer and is baptized shall be saved. He said, I am not going to miss out on that salvation. Another priest said, I was baptized when I was a baby. But he didn't say, he that is baptized and believed shall be saved. He said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Let's put it in the right, right order. And many, 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 many Anglicans and Catholics and Methodists, they come to be baptized. And they'll go back to the church. They love the church. They love the church. You know, they go up on any place. But they make sure they meet the requirements that the word of God says. Because they know God doesn't play. So if I die now, I ain't heaven. Which I wake up, you have me. I don't have the keys. If I had the keys, I would have tell you, well, I'll let you in because he's my friend. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see where Jesus take the keys? <laughs> Jesus hold the keys. Yes, 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 he hold the keys. So now, only he could let you in. He's only Jesus could let you in. And Jesus is a kind of funny fellow. He just said, look, if you don't do what I say, I have nothing to do with you. And when Jesus talk, a lot of what Jesus talk, and when he gets really serious, he talk about must. And I was looking at the must in the Bible. And I look at Luke chapter 249. And Jesus was, at the time... With his, they took him to the temple as normal. And after the temple, they were going back home. And Jesus took back. They didn't, they didn't just stay back with the doctors and the lawyers. And Jesus said, well, while they're going home, I'm going to be here talking to these guys. <laughs> and he sat down and had a little talk with them. And they said, the little fellow dear. And they asked him, they, he asked them questions. And they kind of ain't know the answer. And Jesus teaching them. And they wonder, what is this? A little boy just gives us answer like this. Something is wrong with this guy. His mother couldn't find him. And the mother, what? When she done a few, while, a few miles down the road, the mother said, Joseph, but Jesus. But I thought he was with you. He said, no. No, he thought he was with you. He said, oh, my God. Oh God, I don't want to kill him. I don't want to have that guy, you know. And they turned back to look for Jesus. And 
And Jesus was met with the lawyers and the doctors. And Jesus was asking them questions and they couldn't answer. And when they asked him, he answered and he showed them the powerful things of God. And the mother said, Boy, where are you so not? We're doing here and we're gone. If you don't even come. And Jesus said unto them, How is it that you sought me? How is it that you sought me? Somebody turning up my upstairs. How is it that you sought me? Will he not that I must be about my father's business? Somebody sleeping upstairs. Whiskey not. I must be about my father's business. I must be about my father's business. Now, what is he saying here? When you come on my father's business, mommy, I love you, daddy, I love you, but my daddy in heaven has sent me to earth to do a job, and I must do it. Okay. He's not compelled to do it, but this must is a must of choice. This must is a must of choice. Is baptism a must of choice? I do not know. This must, which Jesus talk about, is saying, I must about my I must be about my father's business. Now I must do it because I want to do it. There's another must that means I must do it because I have to do it. So we got to be careful with those must. But all of the must are important because there's things that you must do. You may not go to hell if you don't. But you'll be able to do what God has, a, has called you to do. You'll be able to enjoy yourself in God. You should come to prayer meeting. I would like to tell you, you must come to prayer meeting. But who am I to tell you to come to prayer meeting? <laughs> you slap me in my face. What are you talking to? <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. But when Jesus said, you must, you must. I have here in John 3, 30, the King James Virgin says, he, verse 30, John 3, verse 30 says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Amen. So that was said, that was said by John the Baptist. He said, Jesus will increase while I decrease. That the people say, what goes up must come down. You can't beat that. If you trust on your ear, you know he can step there, he can come down. If he's a feather, he can come down. <laughs> Amen. Whatever goes up, it must come down. You must be born again. Whatever is the keeping you back from born again, from fully doing what God said, do it. Man, I'm not going to be, be soft and the word of God and give you any leeway. Do it if you want to. You must be born again. Jesus had some must again. He went to Samaria and in Acts in John chapter 4, 3 to 5. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must need to go to Samaria. But normally, if you're going from Judea to Samaria, to, to, to Gal from Judea to Galilee, you don't go to Samaria. You know why? Because the people in Samaria is not, uh, is not friends of the Jews. And there's always confusion when you go to the Jew, when you go to Samaria area. They want nice people to the Jews. 
The Jews weren't nice people to them either. But Jesus said, I'm going to Samaria. He went to, and he left Jesus. Jesus, the disciples said, well, Jesus said, I'm going to wait here. I'll go ahead. He said, well, I go. we're going because we're staying together with really these Samaritan people. They went, and they came back, met Jesus. But while they left, a beautiful lady came by the, the well to draw water. And verse 4 says, and he must need to go to somebody. It seems that this Christian business is a must thing. The thing that should be done is either a voluntary must or a commanding must. Sometimes you have to talk to your own spirit and say, I must do this for God. Sometimes you want to go to church in the morning and you start to get a headache, you don't feel good. You say, I must go to church this morning. You're talking to yourself. You're talking to your, your own in the most being. You say, look, I must go to church today. I don't care what I feel. I must go to church today. Let me tell you something. If all of us here today had succumbed to what we felt this morning, we would all stay home. But you are here today because you say, I must go to church this morning. <laughs> and when you, when you said that, you were talking to yourself and said, look, devil, I must go to church this morning. Whether I have a headache, a fever, I ain't feel good, whether the clothes ain't done wash, remember the dress I was going to put on tear, or uh, whether me here ain't look good, or uh, whether, no! I must <laughs> come to church today. Amen. And you know what happened? How you felt before you came to church is different now. You are feeling so much better since you came to church because all that happened to you this morning was a distraction. The devil did not want you to come to the house of God. But Psalm as David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. He also said, rather to be a doorkeeper in the house of God to, to, than to dwell in a tent of wickedness. Church of the living God, I love you. I believe that as much as I may have said I love you, I believe Jesus loves you more than I can ever love you. But I want you to know this, that when Jesus said, you must be born again, even if he loves you, he has no part with you. I say this because we have a lot of work to do. And because you have met the criteria of to be really be born again, because to be engrafted into the, into the family of God, you're not growing spiritually. You just come to church and you sit down and you listen and you pay your offering. And that's not good enough. Some churches... Don't mind what happened once you ain't, once you're paying your offering. Some churches don't mind that. But I mind, I want you to get sanctified. I want you to get filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to get baptized. I want you to be a witness. I want you to grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want that for you and every one of you. I do not want any bench warmers. I don't want nobody here who, who just come and sit down. I want people to go to witness. I want people to go to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't want you to say, I, well, me, 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 me. No. If you can't read, I know of people who came to the house of God and didn't know the, didn't know the, the letters in the alphabet. And they learned to read and preach. And God is the best teacher. So don't worry about that. No matter how bright you are, that's why God went and chose fishermen. God went to choose a learned man because he wanted to let you know your educational abilities has nothing to do with pleasing God. I come to you this afternoon again to tell you that 
you must be born again. You must follow what Jesus said. You must get yourself ready for baptism. Every Tuesday morning night, we have Bible study. Everybody should be here. Everybody. I don't know why people stay home. Why do why, why, why really why people stay home? You have a real good reason to stay home? I don't think you do have one. I want you to tell the devil if Sister James could come to prayer meeting, I can come. Amen. Come to prayer meeting. Come to it's only two nights a week. Come out the house and praise God and learn the word of God. You are lucky. You have bus to pick you all up. You have churches. Two buses. One could pick up from west. One could pick up from east. One could pick up from north and south. Come to Bible study. Everybody, everybody. We're not going to make it difficult for you. Come to Bible study on Tuesday nights. And Thursday night, prayer meeting. Come and pray. Learn to pray. Teach other people to pray. Enjoy prayer. Enjoy worship. Enjoy the anointing of God in these services. Nearly every church, if you want to know the size of their church, don't go there on a Sunday morning, please. Go to their Bible study and their prayer meeting. And they give you a good idea of the, how much people belong to that church. I want you to come out on Tuesday night and on Thursday night. I'll be looking for all of you. There's nobody here who can't come. There's nobody here who cannot come. Everybody here can come. It's two nights a week. Come. Come to the house of God and learn. The thing about it, I just preached a whole message this night, this morning. And you can't ask me a question. You can't stop me. I don't understand that. I just preach, 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 and that's it. I take it, I leave it. Bible study, you can say, okay, wait a minute there. You just say a word there. What that mean? You can stop the person every time. And we're going to take the time and go to you and explain it to you. And if we don't know it, we can put it as our homework and come back to you with it next week. Everybody come to Bible study. Every single body come to Bible study. Every, every single person come out to Bible study. Would you come? Say amen. Right. I want you to come because I want you to know the word of God. Get accustomed to be in the house of God. I want to thank the youths for coming out in their numbers. The youths come out, nearly every one of the youths come out every night, every Tuesday and, and most on Thursday. Now, come out. Adults, come out. Older folks, come out. The children are looking at you. You're not a good example of them. Come out and let them feel good to know you're here with them. That's on Thursday evening. Amen? So, if you can do that for us, we know we'll have a wonderful Bible study. You know, there's a lot of people out there who prefer to come to Bible study than church. Invite your sinner brother and sister to come out to the study. And if they come once, they're going to come all the time because they're going to be glad to know they can go to the Word of God and learn the Word of God. I think we'll get more people come to the Bible study, more sinners come to Bible study than church because sinners like to ask questions. They want to preach to them. They want to ask a question and get the answer for it. So invite as many people as we can on a Tuesday night. I'm sure soon we're going to have it done on Zoom so outside people could sign in and be part of the Bible study. Those who can come from California and Texas and Florida and so on can be part of the study 
and that we haven't done it yet, we can do it very shortly so that you overseas can sit in, ask questions, we do this, Zoom does a good job. So I call on all of you, all of us today, to come out on Bible study and prayer meeting. Thank you all of you who've been coming every, every day of the week, coming out. And for those of you who come at morning prayer meeting, thank you for coming. Sister Daisy need company. Please come out. And I know some of us has to work in the morning. But if you get ready early, wake up 5 o'clock, get ready to go to work. Then come here for 6. And when you're in prayer by 7 o'clock, you're on the road to go to work even before 8. Anybody could come to me if they want, you know. But I'm not forcing anybody. I'm saying, learn to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Learn to be in the house of the Lord. Learn to be involved in the house of God. I pray for all of you this morning that you will make yourself strong in the Lord and you will grow and you will do exactly what Jesus said must do. It's not up for discussion. Some people want to discuss it with me. I don't, I can't discuss it. I just say what Jesus said. Do it. <laughs> Let's all stand in Jesus' name. Everybody stand, everybody stand. Everybody stand, everybody stand, everybody stand. Let's thank God for his love. Everybody lift their hands before I have and just thank him. Thank you, Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I'll go where you want me. To go there, Lord, oh mountain or plain or sea, I'll be what you want me to be there, Lord. I'll go where you want me. To go. Let's ever just sing that one more time. I want everybody to say, if you really believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to say to him, you're going to be obedient to his word, and you'll sing, I'll go where you want me. Everybody, to go, dear Lord, oh, mountain or oh, plain. And I'll see, I'll say what you want me to say, dear Lord, I'll be what you want me to be. Come here. Are you going to sing for us now? Because you ain't opened them out yet. You know this song? You know this song? It's too easy. One time. Let's go. Sing it to me. I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. Give it to me. I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. Over mountain? Over mountain. Over plain? Over plain. Over sea. I'll be what you want to be. I'll be what 
supposed to be baptized today, you know. So get on and get ready. Uh, um, I'll go where you want me to go. All of us can. Satan has a plan to shut young people's mouth when singing is supposed to be going on. And when they're supposed to be talking, they're talking. Satan is no good. You got to keep your eyes on them. Amen. As I said, I did, I, we made an announcement already this week. We're going to pray and we're going to go to the word of God. And please help Sister Bratcher and Sister Daisy. They see every morning about a day. Good morning, prayer meeting, and Sister James. Or oh, somebody else, give them a company. Amen? We can pray. Once you want to come to prayer meeting, you're going to come. We'll come pick you up. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know sometimes you're tired and sometimes you just can't make it. But make an effort once in a while and come out and surprise Brother Dave and Sister Archibald and Sister Bratch and Sister Jane. These are the prayer meeting, prayer warrior. We don't do four and Sister Dawn, five. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is bigger than our problems. Amen? I plan to make a, I run out of this place this week, Brother Dave. And Sister Dawn will be Sister Dawn, Sister Brother Dave, Sister Dalenta is in charge. As from next, as from this weekend, I'll be running away for a few weeks, I hope. And I just want you to keep your hands up in your prayers. Keep me up in your prayers. I'll be going to do some medicals, and uh, my wife is going to come to to dry my tears when I'm crying. So I got. I have to walk with my tears wipe up, and um, so come fill the church up. Invite everybody. When I turn on the, the YouTube, I want to be able to see this place sound so wonderful. I don't even want to stay in the states anymore. I want to come, come out and make this church the best place that anybody will want to be. May the grace. Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. And Sister Dawn and Sister Dalin and uh, Sister Norma and Dawn um, Chris is also traveling with me. So be us in prayer. We'll leave on Friday. Have a wonderful time. Amen.